and so to our special report on the reissue of Fantasia, which this year is 50 years old, though fortunately it doesn't look nearly as stiff-legged as Jeff Bridges in Texasville. Mind you, it could have done. After half a century, the film was physically beginning to appear decidedly jaded, but happily, in Hollywood, they had the technology they could rebuild it. And just in time for its re-release on Boxing Day, that's what they did. Over the years, the colour and sharpness of the original film has slowly diminished, leaving it now looking rather washed out. Extensive restoration work carried out by the same company that rejuvenated Gone with the Wind has brought about remarkable results. We tried to go back to the original negative in every case we could to get the best quality. So it was really a jigsaw puzzle. We collect all the negative and go through it, looking for damage, uh, places where we'll have to go to other material. Uh, repair perforations and splices that may be coming apart and then go through a hand cleaning process where we have to go through every frame and remove any dirt or foreign substance. This can be sort of a micro surgery project with a razor blade and a magnifier. Not, uh, not work for an unsteady hand. The lab succeeded in recreating the original vividness but the soundtrack presented an equal problem. The optical track was in bad shape when they made the transfer so there was a lot of dirt on it. And dirt on an optical track, a track creates a lot of pops. Track by track, pan by pan, hole by hole, I would take those out. Every time we run the sequence, we're amazed with what they were able to do. I mean, we've been lucky to tap off of the knowledge of people you know, uh, of mixers and shows for the last 50 years. These people started from scratch, and what they did is unbelievable. After a chance meeting between the conductor, Leopold Stokowski, and Walt Disney at Chasen's Restaurant in Hollywood, the concept for Fantasia was born. To expand a single sequence, Mickey Mouse as the Sorcerer's Apprentice, into an entire feature film. This short had turned into the most expensive, one of the most expensive things that Disney's had ever done. And there wasn't a chance that they were going to get their money back for it. And Stokowski uh, said to Disney, well, why not just do a whole feature of this kind of thing? Disney and Stokowski apparently listened to hundreds of classical compositions before deciding on eight by Bach, Beethoven, Stravinsky and Schubert. And we lived the music. We'd play it day and night. We just I loved it. And I'm glad it was as good as it was because we sure did play it a lot. And then we would allow the music, as we got more and more to know the music, to tell us how to stage the thing and what it was in it. When you had so many different ways you could go to the music. You could do the whole sweep of the thing. Or you could hit uh, the beat. Or you could hit the uh, notes that were played. While Disney was attempting to push back the boundaries of animation, as much effort was being lavished on the soundtrack. Fantasound was the first stereo motion picture process. His idea for stereo was he wanted the audience to pretty much have the point of view of the conductor, and the sound to surround you. I know that at the Broadway Theater in New York, when it opened, there were 96 speakers around the theater. There were speakers under each balcony. There were speakers overhead so that when the Ave Maria was being sung and the Pilgrim's Chorus was, the, the, the actually seemed to come from overhead. And the, the Pilgrim's Chorus would start from the back of the theater and move its way down to the front of the screen. This was astonishing. However, despite the breakthroughs both in animation and sound, the film was virtually a commercial disaster on its first release. It was an uphill battle all the way. I think it was beyond their understanding. The problem was that that particular time in our history, people weren't quite ready for it. 
some of the animation in Fantasia is some of the best animation ever done anywhere, period. Uh, 50 years later, there's still been nothing to equal it. Uh, for example, the night on Bald Mountain, the absolute power and terror and might of Chernabog is animated by Bill Teitla has never been duplicated. Uh, the perfection of much of the Nutcracker suite, the mushrooms, the thistles, and so forth, these exquisite little miniature things are, again, simply perfectly animated. You don't look at it and say, gee, if they'd had a couple more months, they could have fixed that, or those designs could have been a little better. There, there simply are no flaws to look at it in this. This is the best animation it has done. It is amazing stuff and fresh as paint.